Very well, let me think. A mama can see ready feed. My life's greatest desire, she murmured to herself. Well, one wish is to live long, very long, she said. Why? Laughed Javeria. Fifty or sixty years are too short for me. One should live to be at least a hundred. And then there is so much I wish to do. Should I die early, all my wishes would remain unfulfilled. She popped a peanut with her mouth. Into her mouth. What else? said Javeria. I want the most outstanding doctor in the country, the best eye specialist, so that when the history of eye surgery in Pakistan is compiled, my name will be at the very top of the list. She looked up with a smile. And what if you cannot become a doctor? After all, that depends both on merit and luck, Javeria stated. This is out of the question. I'm working so hard to make it to the med list. Besides, my parents can afford to spend uh, to send me abroad if I don't get into college here. But still, what if you cannot be a doctor? That's impossible. It's my life's greatest desire. I can sacrifice everything for air. This has been my lifelong dream. And how can one just ignore or forget one's dreams? Impossible. Amama shook her head decisively as she picked another peanut off her palm and nibbled on it. Nothing is impossible in life. Anything can happen at any time. Suppose your wish does not come true. How would you react? Amama fell into thought again to begin with. I will weep a lot, a great deal, for many days, and then I will die. Javeria burst out laughing. You, s- you just said you wanted a very long life, and now you want to die. Obviously, what's the point of living then? All my plans are built around my career in medicine, and if that is not to be a part of my life, then what remains? So you mean this one dream of your life will wipe all other dreams? Yes, think of it that way. Our most important desire is to be a doctor, not to live long. You could say so. Very well so. If you cannot become a doctor, then how would you choose to die? Would you choose suicide or natural death? A natural death, of course. I cannot die myself, Mama replied casually. And if you do not die naturally, then what? I mean, if you do not die soon, despite not being a doctor, you would go on living. No, I know that I will die very soon. If I cannot be a doctor, I will be so heartbroken that I will not survive, she replied decisively. It is difficult to believe that a cheerful person like you can be despairing as to close to death and that too just because you were unable to pursue a medical career. Sounds funny, mocked Javeria. Stop talking about me. Tell me about yourself. What is your heart's greatest desire? Mama changed the subject. Let it go. Why let it go? Come on, tell me. You will be offended if I say it. Javeria spoke hesitantly. Amama turned around in surprise to look at her. Why would I be offended? Javeria was quiet. What is it that I will mind? Question. You will. Javeria murmured. Why should your life's greatest wish so affect my life that I would get upset? Amama was quite irritated. Amama seemed to suddenly remember. Oh no, laughed Javeria. There is more to life than being a doctor, she said. Fickly. Stop talking in riddles and answer me, Amama said firmly. I promise I will not mind anything you say. She held out her hand in a gesture of peace. Regardless of your promise, you are going to be very angry when you hear what I have to say. Let's talk of something else, Javeria replied. All right, let me guess. Your decision is linked to something of great value to me, right? Quiet, Amama, after a thoughtful pause. Javeria nodded her head. The question is, what is so important to me that I should... She stopped in mid-sentence. But unless I know the nature of your wish, I cannot come to a conclusion. Javeria, tell me please. Just for me, she pleaded. Javeria was lost in thought. Amama studied her face. Javeria looked up at her. After a while, other than my career, there is only one thing I value most in my life. Amama addressed her. And if you want to say something in that context, then say so. I won't mind. Amama was serious. Javeria was taken aback. Amama was looking at the ring on her hand. A smile crossed Javeria's face. My life's dearest wish is that you... Amama's face went white with shock. Javeria could not guess the impact her words had on Amama, but the expression on her face showed that the reaction was much more intense than she had ex- expected. I did tell you that you would be offended. Javeria tried to redeem the situation, but Amama stared 
back without a word was howling with pain doubled up and holding on to his stomach the 12 year old boy facing him wiped the blood off his nose on the sleeve of his torn shirt and swung the tennis racket in his hand to hit moise on the leg moise let out an other scream and straightened up with disbelief he looked at his by two years who was hitting him with the same racket that moise had brought there this was the third time they had fought this week and every time it was his younger brother who started the fight he and moise had never had a good relationship and had fought since childhood but their quarrels had been mostly verbal and included threats but of late they had become physical this is what happened today they had come back from school when they got down from the car the youngest brother out of the boot as Moise was picking up his school bag. In the process, he bruised Moise's hand, making him wince with pain. Have you gone blind? Moise cried out as his brother walked out, none telling lately. He heard Moise turn around, looked at him, and then opened the front door and walked into the lawn. Into the lounge. Incensed, Moise followed on his heels. The next time you do anything like that, I'll break your hand, we shouted. The younger boy took his bag off his shoulder, put it down, and with hands on his hips, defiantly faced Moise. I will. So what will you do? Break my hands? Have you the guts? You will find out if you repeat what you did today. Moise headed towards his room, but his brother stopped him, grabbing his bag with all his strength. Now, he flung Moise's bag down. With anger, Moise picked up his brother's bag and hurled it away. Without a pause, his brother landed a sharp blow on Moise's leg. Moise lunged at him, punching his face and his nose began to bleed. Despite that there was no noise from the younger boy, he grabbed Moise's tag and tried to choke him. Moise retaliated by grabbing his collar. There was a tearing sound as the shirt ripped. With all his force, Moise hit his brother on his midriffs so as to make him lose his grip on him now i will show you i'll break your hand shouting and abusing moise picked up the tennis racket that was lying in corner of the the next time and the next thing he knew was that the racket was in his brother's hand and was swung with such force that moise could not save himself blows rained down on him on his back and legs their older brother came into the launch in a fit of rage what is your problem? You create an upheaval as soon as you get home. At the sound of his voice, the younger brother first lowered and then raised the racket again. And you aren't you ashamed of yourself for raising your hand at your older bro brother? The eldest brother looked at the hand holding the racket. No, he retorted with, without any remorse. He threw the racket down, picked up his bag and walked away. You will have to pay for this. Moise called out after him, rubbing his sore leg. Sure, why not? He gave Moise a weird smile. Get up bad the next time. It was no fun hitting you with a tennis racket. No bones are broken. Check out your nose. It's broken for sure. Furious, uh, furious Moise looked towards the staircase where his brother had been standing just a while ago. For the fourth time, Mrs. at the boy, sitting on the first chair in the second row by the window, with complete disregards for the class, he was busy staring out of the window. From time to time, he would look at Mrs. Richards and then return back to the view from the window. This was her first day as biology teacher at one of the international schools in Islamabad. She was diplomat's wife and a teacher by profession. They had recently arrived in Islamabad. At all her husband's postings, she had taken up teaching assignment in the school attached to the embassy. Continuing the syllabus and teaching schedule of her predecessor, Miss Mariam, after a brief introduction to the class, Miss Richards began explaining the function of the heart and the circulation system and drew a diagram on the board. She looked at the boy who was looking distractedly out of the window and just uh, over the class. The boy turned back to the class, meeting his gaze. Mrs. Richards smiled and resumed her lecture. For a while, she continued to keep her gaze on the boy, who was now busy writing in his notebook. Then she, she believed that the boy was embarrassed enough not to let his attention wander. But just a couple of minutes later, she found him looking out of the window again. 
Once more, she stopped her lecture and he turned to look at her. This time, she did not smile. She continued addressing the class as she turned to the writing board. The student again turned to the window. A look of annoyance crossed her face. And as she fell silent again, the boy looked at her with a frown and looked away beyond the window. His attitude was so insulting that Mrs. Samatha Richards' face flushed. Salar, what are you looking at? She asked sternly. Nothing, came the one who would reply. He gave her a pricing look. Do you know what I'm teaching? Hope so. The student was so rude that Samatha Richards kept the marker she had in her hands and slapped it down on the table. If that is so, then come up here and draw the label. She had raised face, changed a myriad color. She saw the students in the class exchange glances. The boy stared coldly at Samatha Richards as she cleaned the last trace of her diagram from the board. He left his seat. Moving swiftly, he picked up the marker from the table and with lightning speed, exactly 2 minutes and 57 seconds, he had drawn and labeled the diagram. Replacing the cap on the marker, he slapped it down on the table just as Mrs. Richards had done and Without looking at her, returned to his seat. Mrs. Richards did not see him tossing down the marker or walking back to his seat. She was looking in disbelief at the diagram, which had taken her 10 minutes to make and which he had completed in less than 3 minutes. It was far better than her work. She could not find even a minor flaw in it. Somewhat embarrassed, she turned to look at the boy. Once again, he was looking out of, out of the window. Basim knocked on the door for the third time. This time, he could hear Amaima in his inside. Who is there? Mama, it's me. Open the door, said Vasim, standing back. There was silence on the other side. A little later, the lock clicked and Vasim turned the door knob to enter. Amama moved towards her bed with her back to Vasim. What brought you here at this time? Why did you turn in, in so early? It's only 10 now, replied Vasim as he walked in. I was sleepy. She sat down on her bed. Vasim was alarmed to see her. Have you been crying? It was a spontaneous remark. Amama's eyes were red and swollen and she was trying to look away. No, no, I wasn't crying, just a bad headache. She tried to smile. Basim, sitting down beside her, held her hand, trying to check her temperature. Any fever? He asked with some concern. Then he let go of her, of her hand. You don't have fever. Perhaps you should take a tablet for your headache. I have. Good. Go to sleep then. I had come to talk to you, but you are not, You are in no state. Vasim turned to leave the room. Amama made no efforts to stop him. She followed him to the door and shut it behind him. Flinging herself on the bed, she buried her face in the pillow. She was sobbing again. The 13-year-old boy was engrossed in a music show on TV when Tayeba peeped in. She looked at her son somewhat uncertainly and entered the room irritated. What's going on? I'm watching TV, he replied without looking at her. Watching TV? For God's sake, are you aware that your exams have started? Tayoba asked, standing in front of him. So what? He said and out. So what? You should be in your bed with your books, not sitting here. Watching this vulgar show. Tayoba scolded her, him. I have studied as much as, as I need to. Now, please move out of my way. His tone reflected his irritation. All the same, go in and study. Tayoba... Uh, Stood her ground. No, I will not get up, nor will I go in and study. My stars are my concern, not yours. And if you were concerned about your studies, would you be sitting here? Subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads.